and we are live. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all well. Um, as usual, give me the heads up that my audio and video is okay. You can hear me. My mic isn't switched off as far as I know. And uh, and we'll get going on, on the topics I want to talk about tonight. Um, I'll just start by mentioning that I did take down my video last night because I touched on a couple of third rail topics. And uh, I just decided, you know, with the YouTube algorithm, it can pick up on things. I don't want to I, I didn't want that to be the hill I was dying on. I have a lot of topics I want to talk about. Uh, the kind of things I, were, I was discussing uh, were perfectly justifiable, reasonable things to talk about, but they're a little bit, uh, the algorithm would pick up on certain keywords. So I just decided it's not worth that. Um, that doesn't mean I would censor myself to the, uh, in every regard just to keep the channel up. If it had to go, I would go to D Live or BitChute, whatever. But just. You know, I like to focus on the internal goings on in Ireland and the kind of topics I'll talk about tonight. Tonight's topics are going to be, as I said on Twitter, um, regime communications, which I always talk about, regime comms or corporate PR, that whole kind of world, as well as a, a little kind of, I won't say a deep dive, a kind of a midway dive into um, um, human trafficking in Ireland and its its relationship to just immigration in general um and i want to talk about those and in light of that you know that's the kind of thing i'm interested in talking about and if i get taken down for that on youtube fine but something that isn't quite my thing anyway it, you get my point so i just took that one down i might put it up on bit shoot but um anyway i'm on here just talking every night of the week one stream isn't a big deal i don't think anyone's going to be going looking for it and um, so how are you all in the chat? And then I will get into my bits and pieces. All good. So um, uh, my first point, um, it's kind of strange diving into a topic sometimes like this by yourself. Feels like a hard segue, but I'll be, um, I want to talk. Okay, I'll start it this way. I'll, I had a Twitter interaction, right? Famous Twitter, infamous Twitter. Everybody gives out about some, or sometimes oh, you're on Twitter too much or something, but sometimes you learn things on it right and i had this interaction with a a person uh a couple of days ago and i'm not going to name that person or link the thread because the first thing that person could do and would do is um accuse me of being kind of oh you're you're like being weird about it putting a, a twitter interaction on on youtube so i'm not doing that because i don't want to bring any personal stuff into it i just want to glean a little bit um from it so it's not about that person it's not necessarily about what that person said in, in specific them as a person it's about the the lessons i've gleaned from it or the kind of insight i gleaned from it or thoughts that occurred to me from that so i can talk about it without without going to the um the source itself because it doesn't matter about this person right it's kind of like this person is just one in a million so they're not important so what well, and we'll be talking about keelings as well tonight by the way they, they're relevant to this um so i'm seeing someone in the chat says get rid of those sideburns hippie i don't know if you're talking to me i don't have sideburns you need to have i have a, I have a beard but anyway so um yeah so it was uh there was an article from keelings and there's been many or not i say it wasn't from keelings that's a freudian slip um it was from the media but it might as well have been from keelings it was one and i'll go through like several of these examples in a while and um, someone, sorry, I've gone again here. Someone says the audio might be out of sync. Is it? I'm looking at myself. Okay, so it's uh, it's on your side. I'll just keep going anyway. So it was one of these articles from one of the newspapers saying uh, Keeling's uh, launches a recruitment drive, but is struggling to find people, something like that, right? And um, underneath you have this person, this kind of... Um, just this person, we can talk about what type of person this person is in a while, but it was just a person who said um, something to the nature of, and I'm just going by memory here, something to the nature of um, Keelings's communication strategy has been very uh, effective or very impressive, something along those lines, right? And um, uh, so I had a look at this person and I noticed that this person was a in the communications business, a, a comms communications PR type of person, something like that, right? And uh, and I was like, that's interesting. So I asked the person, I said, um, 
I'm trying to remember it correctly here now. I could pull it up, but no point. Uh, I, I basically said, uh, you know, what what do you think was impressive about it? Like, what do you think? Or no, I started by saying, you mean the media, you mean they're messaging via the media? Because I was just asking, I was saying, if their messaging isn't via the media, because that's where I've been seeing all of it, just as a as a information consumer at the end of the kind of pipe um, it comes out in, in front of my eyeballs, right? I've been seeing it, so I can attest to it. And I, I say, I've only seen it through the media. That's my point of view. So I'm like, you're talking about their messaging has been good. You're a communications person. So I just asked them, you mean their messaging via the media? Because the only other alternative would be, I don't know, billboards. Billboards being like, here's Keeling's position. And you get it. They're not doing that. They're not doing anything like that. So I'm going, it, it has to be the media. Can, can I just ask you, is that what you mean when you say that? Because I, I don't know what you mean. And she so kind of says, um, well, via the media and other things, you know, or, or whatever. And I said, okay, okay. So it's mainly via the media plus other things. Okay, that's, that's you've answered my question there basically or whatever. And then I kind of went to the next question. This is just a harmless Twitter interaction, right? That's what the platform is there for. That's what the platform is there for. If I said that sentence correctly, but um, but um, so then my next kind of question, I said, what what do you think their message is? You say their message is something like impressive, or or just um, it's just you said it's effective. You know, you just think from a strategic point of view, it's been effective. So I said, what effect? Like, what's been effective about it? And and more to the point, really, what is the message? Because I, I could tell you my impression of the message or they could tell you their impression of the message, but you're coming at it, you're complimenting it. I'm just curious, given that you're complimenting it, what would what is it that you're complimenting, right? What's, or what was their message? If it was impressive, you have to have a grasp on what it actually was. You should be able to say, in a nutshell, what that message was. And I'm just curious to know what your point of view is on that. And uh, this person got all kind of clammed up and said, uh, for the record, I'm not saying I I'm not expressing any opinion on Keelings's business practice. I'm expressing no opinion on that. I'm just saying that their messaging, from a messaging point of view, purely was is effective, is impressive. And I'm kind of going, well, that's okay. I'm not like trying to label you as a Keelings defender. I'm I'm just asking you, like, what the message is, um, because you brought it up. And uh, this person goes, I don't need to have these interactions with randomers on Twitter. I don't want to be harassed or get into battles. And I'm kind of going, I'm not trying to have a battle. I'm asking you like a, like a logical follow-on question from the point you made. Um, and this person says, oh, I don't talk to strangers on, tw on Twitter or something. And I kind of said, that's what Twitter is all about, right? You talk to strangers. But that doesn't matter. The, the essence, the point I'm getting at is that this person brought up the messaging and then would, was not happy to talk about it any further which is the mark of a good comms person as well careful to to kind of um not get into it careful to avoid it you know and um and i was just going again i'm not trying to harass this twitter user right i'm just gen asking a genuine straightforward question what is their message you're a person in comms you're impressed from your whoever your peers are for working for keelings in their comms department or pr department um so you could tell me from your point of view from one comms person to another, you know, you go full marks on that. And um, again, that is not to defend Keelings. I could respect a professional's um, um, uh, analysis of another person's work, you know, in that in that way, like, yeah, you, you could work in communications and, and have, it, it'd be like a lawyer who defends a murderer. You know, another lawyer could go, you defended that murderer really well from a professional point of view. There's nothing wrong with that, right? That would be perfectly fine. So I'm kind of just going, I would love to know a comms person's point of view, how they define what Keelings' message was. Anyway, I've belabored that point. Um, and it just got me thinking about comms in general. Um, this whole world of people people, and what they are and what it is. And then I came on to this other person via that person's account, actually, because I suppose this person is in comms or whatever it is and naturally retweets. If you play hurling, you might retweet other hurlers or football team clips or something. So this person is retweeting or, you know, via that, I kind of stumble across this other person who is in um, looking for a job in comms marketing media. And that's what I'm talking about. You could use the word communications, 
you could use the word comes what it's it's all of that kind of stuff right and uh, and i always find it rather interesting and so anyway it led me on to this other person who whose name and face and tweet i will share because this person put out a call about a job advertisement or something like that and uh i actually <laughs> i'm gonna need a little bit of advice here because i need to be uh, i wonder do i need to be careful last true gail you're active in the chat i don't know if you have an opinion on this this person shared their basically like a graphic version of their cv on twitter to say hey i just got out of a job or lost a job because of uh, the pandemic so i'm looking for another one and tried to start a kind of viral thing you know and ended up getting i'll check now 865 retweets 1.3 thousand likes right you could call that a kind of viral tweet but in this graphic of a cv this person includes their number their email address their name and their kind of uh, brief outline of their cv now i'm reluctant to share um i'm just thinking technically if i share this on my screen here i'm sharing this person's number and email but you could hardly call it a docs because they posted it to what 1.3 thousand people on twitter so it shouldn't be seen as me doing anything wrong can i get an opinion there lads because we are all in this together i know i'm trying to like um give you casual entertainment of an evening here but um but at the same time that's okay isn't it to me it seems okay even though it, it does contain yeah, it's it's it, like to me, it, I feel bad putting someone's number. I'm not encouraging any kind of contact with this person whatsoever in any or 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 bad feeling towards them at all, right? It's just an example from online. So I'm making that very clear now, just in case anybody wants to um wants to um wants to take that up the wrong way. This is yeah. I I mean, I could just read it off. Sorry to drag this out here, lads, but I, maybe I should have thought about this. Um, they have it up on Twitter. I mean technically speaking if me bringing it up on youtube and talking about it here is some kind of malfeasance then you could say the same about somebody who would retweet that tweet because you were taking the tweet from their page and putting it up on your page so this is just like retweeting it yeah fuck it logically speaking it is important yeah so and um, this person says again it's not relevant i i have no interest in this person no like or dislike at all towards them right they're just saying I I I out of work unfortunately because of um because of COVID, and anybody who knows anybody retweet support let me know right, and and just to you know I'm I'm not a bad natured person I hope this person gets sorted out in some way or whatever you know generally speaking right, but what's more interesting is just the whole thing of marketing comes in media because like I say when I had this previous Twitter interaction. When I had this previous Twitter Twitter interaction with this other person who isn't this person, yeah, I was thinking about comms, and then I stumbled across this, which was a, an interesting insight. And I went, God, I've, I've thoughts on this. I must do a video. So the CV is kind of like, whatever, I'm a passionate creative and storyteller, which, again, I'm not trying to mock the person or, or say anything bad about them, but just that did remind me of uh, Sam Hyde, you know, in uh, the uh, 2060 paradigm shift. Um I'm an innovator, creator, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, using creative as a as a noun or whatever it is. I'm a passionate creator. Because, again, that's the language of this kind of world. And the reason I'm talking about this as well is, I mean, I'll tell you why in a sec. But for one, this is not a small thing. Like, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, it's not like there's a couple of people in this. Like, it seems like every second person working in what you could call the, managerial class or whatever it seems like every second one of them as far as i can see seems to be working in marketing comms pr blah 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 it feels sometimes it feels that way um social media manager this kind of stuff um and i'm, I'm sure it's not every second person who works in a managerial class kind of job is is in this but it feels that way anyway so there's a lot of them um i love creating engaging content and campaigns okay um, I am a self-confessed social media addict. So what it gets me thinking about is like a self-confessed social media addict. So that could be, I could be called a self-confessed social media addict, right? And it's, the way I was thinking about it is, and, you know, uh, boast alert, I'm going to like uh, pat myself on the back here, if you don't mind, right? The, the lads are messing in the chat. I just, uh, let me do a little uh, brief uh, break for a second here. Last true girl says office space. 
I have people skills, you know, I'm warm and friendly. I'm, I, again, not CV. We all, we all have CVs and, you know, um, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like being, uh, trying to mock her because of that, because everybody has to stoop a little bit in this regard, right? That's fine. It's not the CV. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the job that exists. And, you know, it's, that isn't down to this person. Like, you know, the job exists anyway. Um, so my point, I am uh, a self-confessed social media addict, right? I am, right? And I'm also a passionate creative and storyteller. But but in terms of being a self-confessed social media addict, um, in my informal work here as uh, making videos, and even before I made videos, just being on Twitter and kind of strategizing, and you could call them like, um, what would you call it? Informal campaigns sometimes, you know, like the for example, the Keelings thing. I don't claim to be the mastermind behind all of the Keelings thing. I had a bit of a role in it, I suppose. But I definitely would have called it, when that was going on, I felt like I was in the middle of a campaign, right? It wasn't just a random few tweets from me. I was thinking about this. A lot of other people were too. And same with the asylum situation. There was, you, you name it really here, even with the pandemic itself and um, all of that, right? What else? I've, I feel like I've had success on a few things and I feel like I'm good at this stuff, right? Again, call that a boast. I just think it's accurate. I'm good at all of this kind of stuff, right? Um, social media, whatever. Uh, you know, if you, if you have journalists coming after you and giving you stuff and creating national conversations around things and all of that, right? Um. I consider myself good at it, very good at it, probably better than most of these people, right? And when I saw her, um, when I saw her say that, I'm a self-confessed social media addict. You see a lot of these marketing media people speak about it that way. Like I'm on social media and you kind of go, what is the product here for this job? Like what actually, I always come back to the bag of chips analogy, right? I love the bag of chips analogy. Again, sorry if you've heard this before, but you know, um, or because I off, I say it like every second stream, it's like you go for a bag of chips. There's the person who delivers the potatoes. There's the person who makes the chips. There's the owner of the establishment. There's you paying the money. You give the money to the effectively to the owner. He gives some of it to the person to make chips and to buy some potatoes. And then the exchange happens, and the product is very clear. It's a bag of chips, effectively, right? And everything else is just attached onto that, including you, the customer, or the consumer or whatever it is right and when i look at this i go uh, maybe some of you think i'm stating the obvious here but it's worth going through you look at this and it's like the product is you know a bit more uh it's not as clear cut as chips no it's clear enough someone in the chat says here the product is manipulation and spin i mean that's kind of like spoiler alert that's effectively the point i'm getting to but i want to flesh that out a little bit more as well um, yeah, the product. So effectively, me being good at the social media stuff, self-confessed social media addict, uh, I love creating engaging content and campaigns. It's true. And I, I feel like I'm a passionate creative and storyteller. I'm, I'm trying to say that with a straight face, but it's actually kind of half true. Um, but it's for nationalist stuff like that, right? Anti-regime stuff. And it's, it's oh, and crucially as well, it's for free, right? There's no one paying me anything. There's no other uh level that you know i do this for or anything like that right starts and ends with just me for my own interest um or or passion <laughs> passion creative and storytelling right um and like i say boast included i'm very good at this and i'm thinking it, it's and i do it for a reason like i say for for because i care about it right and uh, what these people are is effectively someone like me but they say instead of saying i'm really i'm good at this stuff and i'm going to turn my hand to this cause that i'm really interested in right and care about instead of that the person takes the same skills or the same whatever interest and says i am a mercenary for hire for whoever wants to pay me right mm -hmm. and then i will do the whole thing that people like me do be on social media a lot be pushing interests campaigns this that uh narratives the whole lot right it's shutting down not shutting down opposition but kind of like focusing on who your chief opponents are and and uh, threats you know and all of this kind of stuff right that whole game that whole kind of machiavellian game 
But the difference is with these people, they're saying, I am just an empty vessel. You pay me, I do it. It's like, uh, I see, as someone said to me recently, uh, it's kind of like any job. But again, it's different to just any job because a normal job, let's say you're working in a chipper. It's like, you pay me, I do it. It's like, you pay me, I make chips, right? Um, but with this, it's like, you pay me, I I do propaganda for you. And, uh, and you know, you could say I'm stating the obvious. But it is, someone here says that it, the modern private military contractor calls herself a marketing expert. Again, I'm not trying to make this about this person at all, right? But, and again, the skills are like uh, CRM management, HubSpot, MailChimp, right? These are kind of apps that most of us could use. They're not, it's not like you go away and you learn how to like be a like master level hacker or something like that, right? So the, the skills involved are not like, I know how to be like a civil engineer or whatever. It's just saying the skills, the skills aren't that specialized. It's saying I might be third level educated. So I'm kind of conformed in that way or whatever. I am middle, upper, upper middle class, lower, upper class, whatever it is, maybe aspiring lower class than that, but kind of moving up in the kind of professional managerial world. I am that type of person. I'm familiar with the internet, just like any, just like me, right? Just like you can use basic apps, you can use MailChimp, you can use these things. I can use those things. And what I will do is just be on social media all the time and protecting your brand. Same way I protect or protecting and promoting, same way I protect and promote. <laughs> it's a bit grandiose here, but I protect Ireland and I, I oppose an, an immigration or something like that, right? I do that. And this person says, I'll do it. I don't know what the fuck you want me to do. You tell me and I'll do it, right? Hired gun. Uh, and uh, someone here says in quotes, I have Wi-Fi. But yeah, and that's what it is. And um, the uh, that's the thing. You're As a person who does this, you're not offering a skill. You're not saying I can do the best graphic design because graphic design, some people laugh at, but that's actually a skill. Or I can do... God, I'm trying to think of a skill, right? I don't know. I, I can do, I have the, I'm the best calligraphy person in like the Northern Hemisphere, right? I can do scripts, all sorts of thousand year old scripts. And I've learned all this. It took me 10 years to learn, right? A really a skill of some sort. And um, it's not like that. It's more like, I don't have a unique skill. I just, what I'm actually offering you, when you take away the male chimp and the fact that I'm lower upper class and all this kind of stuff, when you take all that away, which is nothing in effect, what I actually am is someone who's willing to and and f not familiar enough uh, but mainly willing to be a propaganda mercenary for your company or whatever it happens to be right that is the product and it's a very strange thing to uh, world to live in you know because it, it does remind me of this kind of communist regime era or something like that where um you know where the state has this massive kind of range of um Aid, not agents, agents is too strong a term, but regime insiders and operatives, right, to propagandize kind of loyalists, regime loyalists, you could say. And someone might say, well, regime, we're talking about different companies here. That's not the government. I don't make that distinction at all, right? If if anything, if someone were to say the regime is the state with a bit of corporations on the side, I would say it's the exact opposite. The regime is mainly the corporations and the government. The government are more like this person, than an actual leading figure in it. As in, they are more like a comms media thing as well for the true regime, which is corporations, big business, and all of that, right? Which does sound all sound a bit cliche to big business or whatever, but it's true. Uh, Leo Varadkar and all of these people are just managers kind of working back and forth between public relations and the interests of these corporations, right? And um, so my, the point I'm trying to make is that these corporations are the regime, right? It's not separate. Um, so you're so uh, to kind of try and get back to my point. So it's kind of working for the regime. And uh, like I say, just like these kind of communist regimes or something like that, you have this whole army of people who are, and again, I'm not talking about this person specifically might be wonderful and talented and everything, but in general, you're talking about mediocrities who just want to get on the train of like just a subsistence living, like maybe a good subsistence living of like, maybe you just about score a house eventually, possibly, and maybe not even that, and like wine and whatever. But you know, it's a kind of a, you could say a, a lower upper class subsistence wage, right? In that sense, who want that and want the status as well that comes with it, like the job, the kind of, the, the so-called, like, like maybe some person from your hometown 
who didn't do so well might think from their perspective you have a fancy job in Dublin. But it's actually, if you zoom out to a regime level, you look at it and you go, it is a role for mediocrities in general, not talking about this person, to be a hired, some words I can't use here, a hired kind of propagand, propagandist, a kind of a typist, a kind of a, just a kind of a, just like, I don't know, a bunch of people sitting on computers protecting the brand, basically, because a corporation has to have that, of course. Um, and then... So I don't know what more I could say about that. I mean, it's like, I could say it's worrying, but it's not really, it's to be expected in a way. But just people, you know, uh, when I see anybody say they work in this stuff, I just go, I don't, you know, begrudge people for doing what they need to do to make a bit of money or something like that. I'm just saying it should be stigmatized, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Same way if you were, you know, at the end of the, if you were in, soviet russia in 1987 you might look at the people who are working straight up for the regime right straight up propagandist the the person who runs the state magazine or the you know like and the social media thing as well as it's promoting the brand to say it's a lot of it might be like hey we have a sale on this week or we are this or we are that or we are giving money to charity but the other aspect of this stuff isn't just silly social media posts a lot of it is recognizing threats and promoting messages so it's not just going to be i actually am going to go on about this a bit more if you don't mind um it's not just um yeah it's not just what you would think via the brand like just about for example with someone like keelings right it's not just like oh here's a post about the delicious berries we have right that would be one thing but it's also going to be for the 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 kind of infrastructure kind of national infrastructure that's needed for their interest or, or any kind of thing that supports their interest. So for example, things like immigration, things like this, things like that, brand threats, which would be people like us or whatever, all have to be dealt with. And these people are the foot soldiers who are sitting around all day. So when they like say, you know, when they say like, oh, it's funny actually, they will say like, oh, the basement dweller anonymous people on a social media who are like counter regime type of people. It's like love or lad, you know, you're doing exactly the same thing as the anons um, you're just doing it for a big massive corporation uh for money that's basically it right that's the only difference um so who's really the immoral who who is on the moral high ground here you have to think about it in this way with these regime i'm not going to use any certain words i was going to use certain words but i won't because i've learned my lesson i have to be i have to be straight up here so um, the there's one more aspect to this I want to talk about, and I will be kicking myself because there's so many angles on this. Maybe I should do a prepared video sometime. Um, so you look at the experience, right? Bloody blah, blah. London Irish Centre for one. That's got a lot to do with. Uh, I, I'm going to look into them more. There's something. There's a baldy guy who is a big figure there, and he's always talking about how any thread where there's something to do with immigration, he'll always be in there online, being the one who says like, um. Sure, didn't we emigrate all over the world? We've no right to say no to immigration. So he'll always be in with that comment, right? Whoever this guy is, and he's one of the lead guys with London Irish Centre. So right, and oh, and I know I have looked this up. They're in, they're state funded, right? And so it's one of those things. But um, but anyway, the key thing here, if you're watching, is Irish Times data journalist. Now I don't know what a data journalist is. I'm not saying this is some scandal on her behalf. Uh, at all she's just one person of a million like i say but it's um i don't know what happened there so it's um you will always hear people talk about the the uh what is it hunter turned gameskeeper or gameskeeper turned hunter right in regard you'll see it all the time in regard to uh the people going from the irish times or whatever it is to the government working in the government in some way right far more important far far more important is this stuff is it is people going back and forth usually one direction but um from media right uh to um sorry um to um to this stuff comes marketing media whatever it is right um now what does that imply you could say oh um what it means is that these people will not criticize the Googles 
the Apples, the Keelingses, the whatever, right? They'll be reluctant to criticize those guys or take a hard, hard stance. They might put, like, when a scandal just emerges, they might publish on it. When the cat's out of the bag anyway or whatever. But the idea of being the classic journalist and harassing corporations left, right, and center is not going to be high on their interest list. So what are they left to do? Uh, go after racists, right? Working class, normal people who want a bit less immigration, uh, they or people who live in Karasavine or this or that, right? Ordinary people who have don't have the connections to all this. Oh, my friend uh, Fergal works for the Irish Times and all this, right? They don't have that. But you will have the so-called Fergal or whatever it happens to be from the Irish Times who is also in comms or was in comms or will be in comms. Instead of going after the Googles and the, the pharmaceuticals and the this and the that and the Keelings, They'll be going after regular people who are protesting this or that or or racist, right? Think of how much ink is poured into racism and think of how little is poured into actually like, you know, going straight after corporations, right? Um, that's not an accident. What's more is that I've just suggested that these people will be reluctant to go after corporations for their own interests. Therefore, they'll go after racism instead, so-called racism, right? But it's probably worse than that because it's not just them going after so-called racism as a stopgap for not having anything else to talk about in the absence of going after corporations. Maybe they're going after these so-called racists in order to 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 kind of get good graces with the corporations, right? Let's think about that angle too. It's not just what they might avoid to get in good favor with the corporations. It's what they might go after as well to get in good favor with the corporations so you what you might have are, are inadvertent attack dogs in favor of corporations because of this perverse incentive that exists and there's going to be a lot more money for comms marketing whatever they are right than there is for the irish times there's going to be a lot more money in it and a lot more jobs so these people know what time it is when they're working in so-called irish times right you look at someone like ellen coin bouncing around to a job from like uh, Joe to the Times to the Independent, it's it's a sketchy thing for them, right? And let's not even get into state funding of, of media. That's for another night. But they, with their real gig, they know is this because they can say, "Listen, you know, whoever it is works for the Irish Times who goes, I've 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 done the shill thing with the Irish Times for years. I know how to propagandize. I know how to know the Twitter sphere and the this and that." I've done it for the Irish Times, I can do it for you, right? And I have all the connections in the media and everything. So I'm a perfect hire for you, Keeling's PR comms department or whatever, perfect hire. So these people are gonna be thinking about that from day one. Um, now I had another point in that and it's kind of escaped me slightly. Um, oh, it's gonna annoy me. Um, I mean, I, I think maybe I've said it. Give me a moment. I know this is kind of uncouth on a stream to just kind of stop and think. Um, what else did I, this is where notes are, are, a, are a good thing um, I mean I have examples just while I'm thinking about it I have examples of the Keelings thing I want to get to in a second um, but you can see the incentive there it's unreal um, and again what's the solution to something like this I would say stigmatize I mean we need to create mimetics on this kind of stuff and again, I'm not talking about anything bad towards this particular person. This is just another person, you know, uh, trying to get by in the world, right? We, we'll we'll be generous. Um, and oh, and by the way, anybody who hasn't subscribed, subscribe. I'm going to insert that in right now. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, that's the story. I've basically said it. That is the product, and it's it's rife in in our. Um, in our society and it is going to have an effect this stuff it's bad it's a bad it's a bad incentive structure in society and the thing is for all the disagreement i could get from what we call the left these days or whoever anybody who's not paid to, everybody seems to be paid in some direction it's these guys i was about to bring up ngos uh the the state are trying to pay the media now as well but for anyone who isn't a paid ngo person a paid comms person whatever a genuine leftist let's say of some description a socialist or whatever who who's watching this right i doubt it but if you were or if someone you were talking to someone about this surely the points i'm making on this perverse incentive that is shot through our society right surely um that person who might disagree with me on loads of stuff could at least agree with me on that point because there's not anything to really disagree with me on on that point anyone who isn't actually bought in 
should be able to agree to this without trouble, uncontroversially. Kind of an obvious thing, right? Give, so if it's so obvious, we should be pumping on this hard, you know? And and when when you see all these people stick in their opinion and you go, hey, you know? And also to recognize when, when a certain message is coming through, because I'm going to get to this now. When a certain message is coming through the media, you have to, this speaks to my point I made a while ago about how uh, the simplistic take on this, yeah, is that, oh, so these people are going to work for for the comms company in a few years therefore they're being paid they're they're like getting you know like a people in thrillbies meeting them in the middle of the night telling them what their message is right here's the message and there'll be a nice job waiting for you in a few years it's not like that right or actually it, it could potentially be but m- more universally more insidiously it's just going to be that inbuilt knowledge that full-on knowledge that hey this is where i'm going so that's the point of it so with that kind of connection between them, the so-called person who works in, I don't know whose Keelings is pure comms person is, but let whoever it is, right? Let's say, could be not, could not be, might not be the case, but let's say, I'm sure it usually is the case in a lot of these situations. Let's say the person in Keelings were, were the PR person, were one of these people who was in journalism, um, and knows all of them, you know, and then the people who are in journalism communicating to the ex-journalism person, potentially in Keelings, they're, they're all basically the, the line between the two, the media people and the, the PR comms people is almost non-existent, right? So when you end up with a certain narrative coming out of the media, nonstop, left, right, and center, you have to look at that and go, what's this about, right? Because again, it goes in both directions. The people from media go to the comms people and the comms people feed into what the media say. And let's just go through the example. Um, Let's go through the examples. Okay, so I'm screen shared here. So I just, here, I'll tell you first before we get into it, right? I noticed this before I I started thinking about comms and PR and propaganda and all the stuff I've been saying for the last while, right? Tonight. Before I started thinking about that, I was just, like I say, just a simple peasant consumer of information that's being pumped out from you know the ether and and of course i'm keenly familiar with the keeling situation and i've been i've been attached to it a little bit so i'm i'm paying attention to this and i start seeing this constant message coming out via the media not via keeling's billboards or anything via the media and the messages are um keeling's tries to hire irish people but couldn't get enough Keeling say that Irish people aren't applying, aren't interested, aren't basically the narrative from the start that the they were going with. They started backing it up. The narrative being Irish people are too lazy, too disinterested, too highfalutin, too whatever it is to do it. So what should we do, right? What 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 can we do about it? We have to get the berries picked. So say la vie. And and it's kind of a derogatory towards the Irish us to say, oh, they just won't do it, guys. So I know you're complaining, waving your little pitchforks around um about this but if you actually think about it peasants um that you're actually too lazy and feckless and and arrogant in your kind of uh lump and prolality to do it so maybe just step off the high horse and get over your little pitchfork waving session here and let's move on right that's the kind of attitude they're bringing to it and the points they're trying to make they can't get the irish workers because irish people won't do it we're too good for it right and I'm not going to go back on my previous arguments. My arguments are, hey, and someone mentions it in the chat, you'll get the workers if you pay enough, right? And then you go on to protectionism and blah, blah, blah. That's a whole other conversation. I've done that. Let's just park that or take it as a, a given or something. So I'm going, okay, so they have their narrative. My narrative is to say, pay people more and you'll get workers. Their narrative is to completely ignore that, even as a potential thought right? And just say, it's a matter of, can you get the workers? Can you not based on paying them minimum wage or low wage? And the idea of kind of flexing the conversation in the direction of how much you could pay them, or you could improve conditions, or you could do this, or you could do that. According to the regime narrative is that those potentialities don't exist. We're talking about it within a bubble of, we're paying people this much, we offer people these conditions, we half asked, put out a campaign to ask people, and we don't get allegedly as well don't get very many replies so that's it and it's all spoken about within that bubble and i haven't seen any of the regime people say 
But hang on a sec, isn't the basic fundamental of supply and demand in labor and employment based on wages and conditions and offers and incentives? No, doesn't come into it, does not come into it. And they're pumping out this demoralizing message of, um, well, um, oh, we tried, but these Irish won't do it. Like, you know, so I know they made noise. I know they gave out and they waved to their pitchforks and they're, they're, everything's around. But this is the real, and it's meant to kind of, what it's meant to do is demoralize our side, let's say, and kind of demoralize the position and also kind of suggest that it was really stupid to begin with. And we called their bluff and it turns out nobody wants to do it. So it's, 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 it's got this patronizing kind of, um, kind of um uh, message to it and it's i could see if i was in that again i'm good enough at this stuff if i was inside in these offices discussing this stuff pr i would say that's our message we're running with it right and that's their message and lo and behold let's go through it the media and uh, bear in mind now bear in mind the person at the start who i haven't named or whatever this random comms person who isn't uh it's a different person to this the other comms person who had this um um back and forth with on twitter do you remember she said very impressive messaging from keelings i said is the messaging happening anywhere but the media because i'm not familiar with it can you tell me if it's where's the messaging she kind of agrees it's through the media and then i say okay so we agree it's mainly through the media via their engagement with the media i think she said something like that right so it's through the media and um, this, this so-called messaging and i go so what's the message from your point of view what are you say it's impressive so you must know what you're t saying is impressive what are you saying is impressive what's the what is it what was the message that you're so impressed by and she like didn't want to talk about it right or whatever that's the thing so let's go just keep that in mind so their message was impressive and it was via the media but we no one wants to say connect the dots uh, when pushed that kind of way so let's just given that we can't get any of these people to say it straight up let's just look through the media and see what the message was um, we, and a lot of these are repeated because they're taken from, um, they're taken from, um, uh, press releases from Keelings, right? And of course, all of these press releases will be taken uncritically. There's no counterpoint. They don't go, uh, Garrod Murphy or, uh, you know, whoever, whoever, right? It's, uh, online, who is a noted, uh, you know, revered journalist, right? YouTube journalist said, it's not like the, it, someone made the counterpoint that maybe they could just pay more. No, they, so they ignore that, right? So they're taking the press release. Keep in mind, so this is basically a copy paste job from Keelings. So Dublin fruit firm Keelings says just forty locals applied for picking jobs. The point I was making a while ago. Here we have, so yeah, so it's forty, and then we have Keelings finds only seventy-eight local workers. So the number changes, but whatever. And this is from the Business Post, what whatever it is, right? Just seventy-eight. Again, it's the same thing from Red FM. Here we have what's this one 78 so same again this time from breakingnews.ie here we have um uh, keeling says it can save fruit crop without additional workers um uh irish company addresses misleading statements so you know again another copy paste job that's the irish times and um, 192 local people didn't respond to jobs in keelings this is from fm 104 we have dublin's q102 192 people don't respond to jobs, right? How very kind of them to relay the message, right? Um, we have, uh, I don't know if I, I think this is just the one, another one copied and pasted from the press release, I suppose. The examiner, dutifully, uh, Keelings finds only 78 eligible workers. So it's kind of the sub, the, there's a kind of a subtext or a sub narrative that they're delivering to you there that isn't news. It's a, it's a kind of a, a deflationary message, a kind of a, it's not that they're not trying to tell you that 78 people were eligible or whatever. What they're really trying to do is deliver a, an emotion, uh, in my opinion, when they, when they're pumping this out. Right. Um, uh, Keelings. So this is from this same again, from the Irish sun, we have, uh, from farming independent wanted 800 Irish fruit and vegetable pickers. So of course Keelings come out and they say, what we're going to try to do is demonstrate to the public that we tried, but failed. Right. And if someone says, but what if we try and succeed? What if we pay more money? That's what we'd have to do to get them, right? They go, never mind. We'll try and we'll fail. That's the whole point, right? And and then we'll have our message. Boom, 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 boom. Give it to all the media, right? And there'll be no mention of we could have paid them more or this or that, right? 
So you end up with farming independent, 800 Irish fruit and veg uh, wanted, like a, like an advert, right? Uh, so when I asked your one um, the messaging you were so impressed by, was it billboards? Was it, you know, the plane with the tra trailing thing off it, Keelings wants, no, it's done via, just almost like it's their own blog via the media. I don't get that opportunity. Um, people, you know, so, and not me, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Random people don't, but the corporations get this uncritical blog post, right? And not just from one, but from all of them. If you can see my tabs at the top here, right? Boom, 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 boom. Um, we move on. Um, the journal, the hard graft of horticulture makes it difficult for the sector to grow. So I haven't really read this, but you get the gist. Guys, I know you're, again, I know you're waving your pitchforks around, but this works a little bit hard. So maybe you wouldn't, you know, you guys wouldn't want to do it. Irish people are too good or too lazy or whatever. Hard graft, you know what I mean? You know, it's, it's, that's the message again, right? Um, we have the examiner. Is this the, I've done that. That one's repeated. Um, we have extra.ie. Keelings defends flying in workers as just 40 people in Ireland applied. So we have a new number again, 40. Only 40 people in Ireland applied. Now, I've heard that that's actually not true, that more, more people applied. I mean, where is the evidence of how many people applied? Did the newspaper say, hey, we're not just taking your word for it, Keelings, PR guy who also happens to be my friend and ex-colleague, potentially, I don't know. Um, um, no, not asking about that. So, so, uh, but, but, so it's 40 people and the, the narrative is the same. Um, there it goes again. No, where am I at with this one? Um, this is just an interesting subplot here, by the way, lads. Uh, hold on a second. I just gotta. Okay, so this is the government. Uh, the government have a quick solution to the Keelings fiasco, right? So um, it's from the Intrio, so the unemployment office, or or it's employment assistance or unemployment, one of those things. Um, so it's basically trying to get. It's basically getting dull slaves, right? Getting dull people in. So they're saying you must be willing and able to work. Bladdy, bladdy, blah, and you'll be paid the same. Um, you'll be paid the national minimum wage and productivity bonuses. Of course, that would be depending on your picking speed, right? Um, so minimum wage. Um, now, again, uh, what right do you keep? This is just a subplot. This is not to do with uh, propaganda or regime comms. But w why is it this corporation are put in a bind because they don't pay enough and the government are coming in bailing them out? Why don't, like, why aren't the government just going, it's not our problem, lads? I'm telling you what, we're not giving you dole slaves and we're not, uh, they can apply to you if they want to, but we're not setting it up, right? Um, uh, and you're not bringing in Bulgarians. So beyond that, it's a free market, lads. You know, what can I say? Capitalism, right? You have to pay more for your labor. That's just the, the supply and demand uh, uh, complex they're going on. Sorted out, right? Uh, no, they the government step in like this. Very strange. Um, so that is that is the message that went out and when you look at things like regime comms you look at this person who's impressed with the message the message again my big thing is like think the emoji with the thing the hmm emoji right my emoji slash kind of slogan for this topic is like that face the message with a question mark after it what's this message right and how did this message get out there that's interesting and what's so impressive about it? How did it get out there? And what is the message? That's the point on that. So I'm 48 minutes, 49 minutes in. I have another topic and I'm tempted to leave it off. I'm starting to think maybe I should leave it shorter because there's no point going on for like two hours. I could talk about my bit tomorrow in better detail. And then this episode would episode, I'm getting notions already. The show, the episodes would, um, would be a bit more coherent. If this one, if I leave it here, you know, it, it, someone could watch it and it, it's a coherent topic and it's what, what did I say it was 49 minutes? I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, whatever I had in, I was talking about, uh, human trafficking. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it tomorrow night, hopefully, or whatever. There's plenty more shows, episodes to go. Um, I think I'll leave it there, lads. Um, if you want to share this around, feel free. Uh, I mean, likes, I don't even know what likes do. Apparently it does something. You know all that stuff anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Actually, I'm going to have a look at the chat. Um, there's a lot going on in the chat. That's the news I have for you there on the chat. Okay, yeah.
Um, anyway, look, I hope you're all well. It would be nice in a way if you were all just kind of here and we could all chat away like normal, but that's not how it works. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, yeah, tomorrow night I'll try to do sex trafficking, or it's sex trafficking, human trafficking, and labor exploitation trafficking in Ireland and blah, 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 blah on that. And later in the week, I'm hoping as well to have a couple of guests on, um, maybe to do a review discussion on Fargo, which I watched recently. So I might have a couple of the lads on um, if I can get it together. So that'd be good. Maybe Thursday, maybe Friday, still kind of trying to sort that out. Um, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.